Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Hips and Tricks video. Today we're going to be continuing our march through all the crops available to us in Farm Sim 25 by taking a look at soybeans. Now soybeans has a rather interesting distinction in that it is one of the crops in Farm Sim 25 that actually has no further production use. There's pretty much two things you can do with soybeans. One, you can feed them to your pigs. Two, you can sell them at one of the various sell points. That's pretty much it. Now let's take a look at the Farm Sim Academy infographic to get a little bit more background information. We're getting an average yield, fairly low average yield of 4,500 liters per hectare. So getting your yield bonus is gonna be very important with this crop because it has a fairly high average selling price, again on easy economy, of $2,334 per thousand liters. So on a zero bonus field, we're only looking at a yield income of about $10,500. Now, if we can double that to around $20,000 by getting optimal yield bonuses, that's gonna be a great thing. If we can get even more of a bonus from our MacDon, which we'll be demonstrating later in this video, that's even better. We're gonna see an average seed usage of 300 liters per hectare according to this infographic, but as we have seen in other videos for Farm Sim 25, the seeds per hectare has not been lining up very well. Overall, we have seen a seed usage reduction from these graphics. We're gonna see an average growing duration of six months, and we're gonna be able to plant this if you have the crop calendar enabled in April and May, and you're gonna see it harvested in October and November. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the in-game menus and see how well up this information lines up well, with respect to Farm Sim 25. So looking at our prices screen, we have an average high of $3,711, again on easy economy per thousand liters, and an average low of $1,560, again per thousand liters on easy economy. So quite the swing from best price to worst price and our harvest time period of October and November, sadly, is right around the worst time to sell your crop. So really, you're going to need to store your crop in a silo for the majority of the next year until you get to that July time frame when you're going to be wanting to sell, sell, sell. Now, as far as where can you sell your crop, we're going to be able to sell it at the farmer's market here on Riverbend Springs. Of course, depending on what map you're playing on, the sell points are going to vary. You can also sell here on Riverbend Springs at the Goldcrest Valley Train Sell Point, Grain Barge Terminal 1 and 2, as well as the Grain River Silo. If we take a look at our crop counter for soybeans, indeed we can plant it in April and May, and we're going to be able to harvest in October and November. And regardless if you plant the crop counter enabled or not, it's going to basically be six months from planting to harvest. Now, I mentioned storing your soybeans because, well, you're going to need to do that if you want to get the best possible price. And to do that, you're going to need to put down a farm silo. Now, I have here four different silos that are available in the base game. We have a brick silo located right here with our dump and fill point. We have kind of a concrete silo, typically associated with silage as opposed to grain, but it's all right. We have a dump point and output pipe there. More of a traditional modern steel silo complex right here, again with our dump and fill point. And then we have this singular bin. And we're gonna do a video later on related to how we use these particular silos because they are a little special purpose in that we will need to use augers to both fill and empty these bins. They are very common here in the United States, and I really do enjoy using them in my general gameplay. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we're going to have to talk about how do we grow our soybeans. Basically, what do we do to get them started? We're going to need seed, and we have here three different types of seed that are available in-game. We have a big bag pallet. We have a big bag. And then we have a pallet of seed bags. And the big distinction between these is that the two on the left hold 1,000 liters worth of seed each. Meanwhile, the one on the right here is going to hold 1,050 
leaders for the seed. So we do get a little bit more seed for our price with the pallet of seed bags. If we go here and check our vehicle shop, we're going to find our seeds under objects. We have then our big bag seed, $1,260. We have our big bag pallet of seed, $1,260. And we have our pallet of seed bags, $1,260. We could also find them up here under seeding. And then we have a category of seeds. And again, they're all the same price. But again, our pallet of seed bags, we're going to get 50 liters more. With respect to putting this crop in the ground, well, we're going to need a planter this time around because planters are going to be required for our soybeans. And for this particular video, we're going to be making use of the Optima RS planter. And it's going to be available right here. It doesn't hold the most seed, but it does also have the ability to fertilize. So you could seed and fertilize at the same point in time, should you so wish. And here we have our soybean icon. So that's what we're going to have to use in order to put our soybeans in the ground. Now, this particular seeder has an interesting feature in that it has a transport position and a field work position. So I'm just going to back up here and load this thing up with seed. It's going to hold a total of 660 liters worth of seed. I'm going to move here out of the way and we are going to disconnect. We're then going to reattach here in the middle. And then we are going to hit X to fold and basically put it in field work mode. We're going to also hit Y to change over to our soybean seed. Now, we're not going to put any fertilizer in here because I've already prepared the field and it is fully fertilized. Now, speaking of preparing the field, you will, of course, need to prepare your field before planting. And that would entail plowing the field if it required it, liming the field again if it required it, mulching the field if you wanted to get that extra two and a half percent bonus rolling the field after seeding if you want to get that two and a half percent bonus there and you can see this field is fully fertilized and ready to go the only thing we're going to need to do after we put this seed in the ground is we are going to need to basically run either a weeder through it or run herbicide over the field in order to basically take care of the weeds. So to that end, I am going to go ahead and finish planting this field. I will keep track of how many liters worth of seed are used and I'll bring you back and give you an update there so you have a general idea of how accurate was that Farm Sim Academy infographic. So after seeding field 41, which we selected because it was approximately one hectare in size. So if we look here at field 41, we come here and get over to our farmland screen. We can see this 1.18 hectares in size. And the field area is just a little bit wider and just a little bit longer than the actual field itself. It extends here to the fence line. It extends to the road comes out here to both dirt roads between the fields. So it is as close as we're gonna to get to one hectare in size without going out and creating our own field that is somehow exactly one hectare in size. But at any rate, we used a total of 207 liters worth of seed. We now have, as you can see down the lower right corner, 453 liters worth of seed remaining. So we are a bit short with respect to our seed usage, which is not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all, which means that we've used less seed than we were supposed to use per hectare in order to put our seed in the ground. Now I'm gonna go ahead and spray this field with herbicide, which will tackle our weed problem. And then we will advance into May and see what our first growth date is gonna look like. 
So here we are in May. We have our first growth state for our soybeans. We've obtained a 95% field bonus. And again, we are 100% fertilized. So let's go ahead and move forward in time and uh, see what this stuff looks like after it's had a chance to grow a little bit more. Oh boy, it's raining and it's raining pretty good here. But at any rate, we are in June. We've seen another growth state. We've got a little, little buds on our soybeans here. And I have to say, I really do like the new soybean textures that we're seeing here in FS25. So let's go ahead and move on into the third growth state. We've seen our third growth state here in August. So we did have to go a whole extra month from June to August to see our third growth. And that means that we should see our final state of harvest ready in two months. So summertime around October. We've made it in October. It is now rated harvest. And again, I really do like the the new crop textures we have here with respect to soybeans because it doesn't look blah. It doesn't look all brown and dead. We still have a little bit of green in here. And if we look close, I think we can possibly even see the seed pods. Maybe. All right, at this point, I'm going to save the game. So let's save. And what we're going to do is we're going to harvest this field using our Kloss Harvester. And then we are going to basically calculate out what our yield is. I'm then going to reload this save back to this exact point in time. And then we are going to swath our soybeans with the Macdon. Now, the Macdon is a paid DLC at this point, but it was a add-on bonus with respect to pre-orders. So those that pre-ordered were able to get this at no extra cost. If you do want to get it now, though, there is a little bit of a cost to it. I do have a link to that down in the description below. It is an affiliate link with the Giants eShop. That link will work for any PC install of FarmSim, be it from Steam, Epic, Microsoft Store, or direct download from Giants. If you are on console, though, you will need to get, pick up the DLC from your respective store. Once we swath it with the Macdon, we're going to use this pickup header, again, from the Macdon pack, in order to pick the crop up with our harvester and run it through and harvest it. We've seen a 25% bonus on wheat, barley, oat, and canola. Well, we see the same bonus with respect to soybeans. Now, where are we going to find all this machinery in the shop? Well, if we come here to vehicles, we scroll down to combine harvesters. Any of these harvesters are going to be able to harvest your soybeans. For this particular video, I have selected Alexion 6900. And from here, you can click on combinations. And this will take you to a collection of headers which the game suggests would probably be right sized for your harvester but you can of course pick any header you want to do that we're going to back out here to our grain headers category and any of these grain headers will be able to harvest your soybeans for this particular video we're using the fd250 flex draper and then we have our macdon again this is part of the macdon pack if you don't own this pack you won't see it listed in your shop you will be able to pick it up either by getting it from your respective store if you're on console you can pick it up from steam if you want or if you want to kick back a little bit to the channel again there is an affiliate link down in the description for the macdon pack we're going to need the macdon swather the actual machine and then we're going to use the macdon swathing header and this is going to be working for wheat barley, oat, canola, and soybeans. So this is going to be our last video. If you've seen the other videos, this is going to be the last video where we're going to be able to run the swather and compare yield. Then we're going to need our harvester. We're going to have to come to specialty headers and pick up the Macdon pack pickup header. It's going to be able to pick up swath wheat, barley, oat, canola, and soybeans. Once again, this will be the last time we're going to see the 
pickup header in our crop videos because no other crop is going to work with this or the MacDon Swather. Now that we have gotten in our harvester, we're going to unfold it. And just because we have a fence up here, I'm going to go ahead and start up at the top of the field, which I guess technically is the southern part of the field, if you take a look in reference to PDA. But nonetheless, this is where we are going to start. We're going to drop our harvester down, turn it on, and off we go. Now, if you note, know, with respect to soybeans, we do not have the ability to put out straw in the rear, at least with the base game. I do believe at this time there is a mod out there that does permit that. But with respect to these particular videos, we are only demonstrating base game functionality. Now, with respect to the MacDon pack, while it is not technically base game, the functionality is somewhat built in to the base game such that we will be able to see modded swathers be released that will have again the same general functionality now if we look here at our soil composition i want to point out that yes we do have a mulched state that we are starting out here but i also want to point out that if you look behind the harvester we are also getting a mulch state post harvest except for this little bit area here and the reason this area here doesn't have a mulch state is because we don't have our chaff our harvested soybean plant matter scattered on the ground so the act of simply harvesting your soybeans see we don't have that here the act of harvesting your soybeans will just by default give you a mulched state so right there you got plus two and a half percent into next year's harvest on this field regardless of what crop it might be i'm going to go ahead and continue harvesting this it won't take too terrible long with this nice harvester and header combination and again we'll come back and i'll report how much we have as far as soybeans go and then we will reset jump in our swather and repeat the process and basically compare at the end is it better to harvest with a traditional harvester or if you do have the swather is it better to invest the money and the time in making the extra pass over the field to get your swathed soybean bonus if one exists so after harvesting our, again, approximately one hectare field, I have a total of 8,718 liters worth of grain in our harvester. Now, if we do the math, that's approximately a 93.7 bonus over what the infographic said we should see, which was, again, 4,500 liters. Now, like I said, we are approximately one hectare, so that is pretty darn close. So that's what we're going off as the premise is basically we're seeing pretty much a 95% yield here, assuming this field ultimately ends up being just slightly under one hectare in size. Now, that's going to be good because, again, we've got a fairly high average selling price on Easy Economy, which will translate to a fairly high average selling price on normal and hard economy compared to the other crops you can also see that now that we have fully harvest harvested this well it's going to need to be weeded and fertilized and reworked but again we don't need to come here and mulch this because of the fact that we've harvested it we've scattered things to the wind and therefore we already get our mulch state so let's boot things back up and see what we get with the swather now just for consistency sake i am going to start right up here at the top of the field just like we did with our regular harvester 
We're going to spin everything up, lower it down, and drive right on into the field. And we are now swaffing our soybeans. And the way this works is basically we are cutting our beans. We have a belt that is pulling the beans into the middle of the header. And then it's just simply laying it down behind the swather in the middle. So this is the full plant. Just been cut and gently laid down, if you will, behind the harvester in a nice row. And the overall premise, if you're not familiar with swathing, is that this is a more gentle harvesting process and therefore you are apt to lose less grain in the overall process because of how you are cutting it down and laying it down gently and then with the pickup header gently picking it up off the ground and then processing it through the harvester because to some degree the general harvester header it's a little more violent uh, because typically you're going to be able to swath when the crop is a little bit greener in the field and let it finish drying or dying if you will in the windrow and therefore the crop is going to be able to hold on to the seed a bit better because of the fact that it is greener when it is run through the header. So I'm going to finish swathing, if you will, this field. And then we'll come back and we'll compare our overall yield between the traditional harvester and the swathing methods. So the way this pickup header is going to work, again, it is going to gently pick up the crop. We can see that there's a little little fingers that gently pick the crop up and lay it on the belt and then at that point the auger works it in to the harvester itself which of course is then going to separate the grain from the chaff or plant matter and it's going to shoot the plant matter out the back and the grain is going to go into well, the bin pretty much So just like with the traditional harvesting method, we are getting a mulch state after we harvest because we are scattering the chaff out onto the ground. So that is nice to see. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish running this thing up and down these windrows and we'll see where we land as far as yield. But remember, we saw a yield of 7, 000, or no, 8,718 liters. That's the target to beat as far as soybeans off of this particular field. Okay, our harvest is done for the second time, so we now have some numbers to compare. Remember, our base yield from the infographic was 4,500 liters per hectare. Our yield with respect to our traditional harvester was 8,718. So a 93.7% bonus. And we were supposed to basically see around a 95% bonus on the field. And the field is approximately one hectare in size. So that's about right. Now, what did we get with our swather and then our pickup header? Well, this trailer currently holds 10,891 liters worth of soybeans that is a 25.9 percent increase from what we saw with respect to the traditional harvester and if we sold our crop at the max average high price that we see here of three thousand five hundred sixty seven dollars then we would see a revenue of thirty one thousand and ninety seven dollars with traditional harvesting techniques $38,848 with our swathing techniques. So pretty good increase there. $7,800 and some dollars basically 
from using a traditional harvesting method to a swathing method and uh, well I think it's definitely worthwhile if you already own the swather or if you're going to be doing a whole lot of crop that is compatible with the swather to go ahead and pick that up and make use of it. Now I just wanted to demonstrate here of course the technique of filling the silo just bring your trailer there and dump in and then bringing product out we're gonna hit R we're gonna pick what product we want and we're gonna be able to do that and then of course you're gonna take it to your cell point and sell it or if you have pigs you can use it as the protein food for pig food so you can use this for your pigs if you want but it's a pretty decently paying crop especially if you get the yield from the swather to uh, to maybe be worth using either canola or sunflowers instead of soybeans for your pigs now of course we're not going to get anywhere near that price in October when we're selling it here we only earned nineteen thousand seven hundred and sixty four dollars so we left a lot of potential money on the table by selling it in October but I did just want to go ahead and demonstrate a couple of those techniques here in this video. If you like this video, then please, by all means, go ahead and give it a like and share it with anyone else that you know that may be a farm sim player or interested in farm sim so that they will be able to get the most out of soybeans. And, well, they can check out the rest of the tips and tricks playlist because that is where we're going to find a whole lot of information. I still have a lot more crops to work through and we've got a fair number of crops and other videos already in that tips and tricks playlist until next time happy farming